Now the app is out and I've done the repairs, I'm turning my attention to the cabinet. You can see this is the front of the cabinet with the script Marshall logo. The top is very dirty. The handle here has Marshall written on both sides of the uh, handle attachment covers. I've got to get these off, I'm not sure how these come off. Um, loads of dust along the bottom, loads of dust on the top. You can see in there loads of dust. Um, I've got the original manual here that came with the amp. That's been sitting in there since I bought it. As was the original Marshall foot switch, which I don't think I used but once or twice. Still in the original box. So it's got to be cleaned up, but it's nice that I've still got the original instruction manual. Um, the bottom's filthy. There's Terolex here that needs to be glued back. All the vinyl Tolex has come loose here. It's probably the heat from the amp has softened the glue. And the speaker is filthy and needs um, cleaning. Start by removing this. This lifts off very easily. And there, for your edification and enjoyment, we have 30 years of filth. So, uh, hmm, that's going to be fun. Now the worst part of this is the cone. I've got to be very careful I don't suck the cone up and tear it with this. I'm just brushing off some of that dust. Keeping the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner away. Mostly at the top there, the rest of it seems okay. Well this cover here was not easy to get off and in the end I literally just pried it off with a screwdriver. Um, in fact I went in this way and sort of lifted it like so. Um, you can see this space here. Well the back of the, um, the cover has these plastic lugs, one on either side. They just clip into that. So you have to basically just release it uh, in order to get this handle off. I'm not easy to do. I mean I have slightly damaged the lug here. Just distorted it slightly. I, I think it will still be okay. But it's not the best design. I thought I'd show you the other one. If it all goes wrong you'll see it live as it happens. So I'm between the plastic cover and the metal frame. I'm just sliding this in. I think maybe I should go in the side here, actually, since I know where the lug is. There it is, perfect. So, um, don't do it that way, the way I did it before. Come in from the edge and free that lug with, with a nice long screwdriver. So I've taken the handle off, now I'm just removing the speaker here. There's four quite rusty screws. these are bolts. Um, some kind of retaining nut thing. Now I'm taking this out because I want to give the inside of the cabinet a good clean. I don't want to damage the speaker in any way. I don't want to get the cone wet with overspray from the f this foam cleaner I'm going to be using. So let's have a look at this. Well, it seems quite stuck. It's definitely stuck. There we 
go. Whoa. Right. There's the speaker. There's quite a lot of dust here, which is weird. It's come through the grill cloth. There's no other way it could have got there. Um, there's this sort of foam speaker surround that's uh, that was what was sticking. So I'll clean this out carefully. Uh, the speaker's in good shape. There's nothing wrong with it. Paper cone. Nice big dust cover. I got this on the low setting. Last thing I want to do here is to suck the speaker cone into the vacuum cleaner. Okay. Right, well, let's tidy that up. I did get the brush in here where that spider is uh, just to remove the dust off the back of the cone just very gently, I don't want to do any damage but there was a build up of dust there's quite a lot of rust on this speaker especially on the top here uh, the bottom is still good like new um, the galvanization at the top has uh, discoloured and pitted and the terminals are rusty Quite a lot of rust actually on all the metal fixtures on the amp. Anyway, this is the um, G12L speaker. It has a 2712 date code there. I have no idea what that means. Anyway, I'll put that away for safekeeping. So I'm going to do some cleaning now with tough stuff. I did a video about this particular cleaning product which you should go and look at if you want to know more about it. So I won't go into any details now, but first thing I'm going to do is to clean the outside of this cabinet. You have to leave it for about a minute so it gets working. This was pretty dirty. I can see the, the white foam is turning into sort of like a light brown colour where it's lifted from mud and dust and whatever else is on there. I've had this amplified quite a long time. It's more than 20 years. I'm not sure exactly how it could work it out. And it's been with me halfway around the world in various uh, various times. You can see how that's uh, turning into a light brown colour. Yeah, so I used to gig with it um, because it was an easy thing to carry. Small gigs, not a problem. Uh, it's excellent for open mic night where you have lots of people turning up with their amps and there's not a lot of room on stage. You just bung this up there. So this is the American 110 volt version of this amp. Um, so I have to have a power transformer to use it in the UK. You can see how dirty that is. It's really lifted that dirt. So I wipe most of it off with that and then you can get right down into the Tolex by using a microfiber cloth. I've got to tell you that is clean. It's great stuff, it really is. Now I wasn't sure if I should do the grill cloth, it's not generally advised, but um, this is a plastic sort of fabric, so I thought I'd give it a go. I'm going to go very gently over it, particularly around the edges where there's quite a bit of dust 
and uh, rubber dust at the bottom, especially down here, it seems to be disappearing quite quickly from the surface. Last thing is to do the inside. Now this is pretty filthy and I can see the paints come off here. It looks lighter than it used to, but it was quite dark at one time. Um, it could have something to do with being a bit damp, I'm not sure. There's a little sticker here and it says on that sticker covering Marlin, M-A-R-L-I-N, Marlin. So I assume Marlin put the Tolex on this and he left a little sticker in the bottom there so that he could be identified. There's another sticker over here on the side but unfortunately it's torn off. So I'm going to carry on with this and let's see if it works in his side. Just to freshen this up a bit, certainly make it smell better. And I can also pick up the vinyl um, as well. I'll just leave that for a few seconds. Well, surprise, surprise, all that stuff that I thought was paint peeling off or paint that had worn away, uh, it, it was really just some sort of mould, and that's come right off. Um, I managed to work around Marlin's sticker. You can see there again, same thing, it's nice and black. When we get to the top, um, this is the top of the amp, you can see uh, they didn't in fact bother to paint this, there's some overspray, but the paint really only goes to here and here. So when they were spraying it, they didn't get right in there or, or turn the cabinet. The Tolex has come free here, so if Marlin, if you're watching this, uh, I hope you realise that you didn't put enough glue there. Anyway, I think on the whole Marlin did a pretty good job. So I'm going to glue this down. <coughs> glue these other bits down, put them all back again. But I'm really impressed with this tough stuff right here. As I did in my other video, I recommend this stuff very highly. It's, it's a great product and it cuts down the time you need to do this. And uh, this is a winner. I'm giving it some auto glim. It's the British equivalent of armor all. Just apply it very lightly. It's a nice sort of almost orange-like flavour. I should say orange-like smell. I haven't been drinking it. Oops, a little bit of a nick there. I want to show you in the corner here, along the bottom, you can see where it's faded. Right here, there's a band of fade. And on the other side of the amp, there's some fading here. And there's various bits of fading at the top. Now, I don't know whether this is as a result of my cleaning it. I think it was a little bit faded before, or whether it's uh, just fading from sunlight. You can still buy this black uh, speaker grill covering. They've been using it since the 80s, so it's widely available uh, in America and the UK. It's going to run about £10 for a piece big enough to 
do this amp plus the time of taking this logo off which has plastic prongs that stick out that are pushed into drill holes or holes in the in the baffle board so taking that off is a bit risky you could damage it and then I thought well rather than do all that what's an option and I thought about material dye dye for rayon and sort of polypropylene and things like that and it's quite complicated to, to do this. Um, difficult to dye anything with the sign here. This would have to come off the logo. And then I hit upon the idea of this, which is basically shoe polish in that liquid form. And so I started to apply it up there. And almost instantly it took care of this faded area. And it seems pretty solid once it's dry. It's not really coming off. So basically I'm applying it directly onto the cloth. I'm taking this brush, it's a light bristle brush, I'm just working it in. I don't want it to build up. I'm using the brush just to brush it around. I wish I could get it a little bit closer to the edge more easily. And this brush does reach the edge. I don't know if you can see that, but it has it has darkened this up pretty much, taking care of the faded area that was running along there. So you can use this stuff, it's cheap. You can buy it for a few quid. A few dollars. And it's the cheapest and the easiest way to do it. I don't know how long it will last, but certainly uh, initially it's it's going to be fine. It's coming off on my finger a bit there, but I don't think it's dry. And just don't polish it out. I don't think you want to shine it up. Alternatively, you have to take the baffle off and the logo and replace it with new speaker cloth. Well, I'm really pleased with this now. You can see the little label through the speaker hole there. That's an to mark on the grill cloth. Um, it looks pretty even. Uh, it took about five minutes. Uh, I think it looks great. It looks almost like new. So I've glued the vinyl back here. This has been done. And the most difficult bit was up here. This was all lifted and folded back, so that managed. I managed to get that down. I just used uh, super glue. It's got a little bit of a lump there, but I wasn't unable to get that to flatten out. But I don't think that will stop uh, the amp going in. So I've done this side, this side, a little bit along there. So the last thing I'm going to do is to glue this piece here down. I've got my super glue. Just put a bead underneath it. And then I use something, you can use your fingers, I'm just trying to keep out of the way of the camera, just pushing it down to make sure that we get a good flow of super glue underneath it. I probably put too much on actually. I'm just pushing it down. It'll come back up again, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Eventually it will stick down. Apply some pressure while it sets. it. That will hold pretty good. I put four new rubber feet on. They are a little bit different than the originals, a slightly different shape and um, the originals are a very hard plastic so I, I think these are probably stronger and better overall but I only have three so if I can find another one of these and I'll swap them back. Under each screw here, you can see the screw there, underneath that I put a washer to stop the screw from pulling through the 
uh, foot so that will help sort of pinch it down to the bottom of the amp. There's a little nick here where this Tolex has been pushed back so what I would do here is sort of get underneath it and try to take out any crushed Tolex or any um, anything that's folded back so I sort of release it so it will come back in the direction it's supposed to go. Now I'm just going to take the nozzle of this it's a bit tricky because the nozzle's not very wide I mean the nozzle's too wide Okay. Slow that on. Now the top with this sort of thing is you, if you push it down it's not going to stick so you've got to kind of get it to the point where it flows all round where it needs to be. Actually that went down pretty easily. And I'll just push it down. very slight discoloration there where you can see a little bit of wood or some of the underside of the Tolex so I just take a sharpie just get it on there and then just wipe it off so we'll just stick to the areas where it needs to. Last but not least is this piece of MDF this is really a piece of MDF it looks like it's been cut on the table saw and slapped in here um, there's been no, no attempt here to paint this side. It seems like they've just painted the back. Anyway, that will go in there. Um, but this has been chipped. It's also quite likely it's got a bit wet, so it started to swell. MDF will do that if it gets wet, it, it just swells up and it's useless. So what I'm going to do here is to take the Sharpie, just gently apply it to the areas that you can see the MDF is exposed. wipe it off. It takes a few seconds. It's not really even necessary but I think it when you can see the MDF coming through it does catch your eye. So by doing this it takes you 30 seconds. It just takes care of those unsightly marks. I just makes the job look just that little bit better. You might want to do it twice. Just to be short. I don't know if the camera's picking that up but it does look quite a lot better. I'm going to put the handle on. And these metal pieces, this is quite a good design actually, it's very strong. They have a little spike here, so I'm just placing that back where it was originally. And of course it could have been this one, there's no telling. That one actually fits better, so I think that one was there. Screwing this in. Okay, same thing on the other side. Engage the prong, there it is. screw home. Make sure it's good and tight so it doesn't come off. Doesn't come undone. And then the two Marshall clips. Let's clip right on. They go on much more easily than they come off. There we go. Now oh, that looks like new. That really looks good. Although we're looking at this with artificial light, I think you'll agree it looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. It looks almost new. We, we do have the ubiquitous white spots of paint here and there, which um, any of you that know Uncle Doug, um, his testament to the fact that you find these little blobs of white paint on, I think, every am amplifier that was ever owned by anybody. So um, there it is. It's uh, It's great. It's ready for the and to go back in.